Thanks for joining us and welcome back to the Watchman on the Wall podcast. Periodically, we'll bring you true stories of angelic encounters, heavenly visitations, near-death experiences, as well as modern-day prophecies that are relevant to us today. When we come back, we'll begin our next episode. Hello and welcome back to the Watchman on the Wall podcast. In today's program, we're going to be talking about dreams, in particular dreams that individuals are having around the world about food shortages as well as price increases. Now, I've taken several of these dreams that individuals are having and I put them on the podcast today. But to start with, I'd like to start with Perry Stone. Perry Stone talks about some warnings that are about to happen in possibly in March and April having to do with this subject. So we're going to start now with Perry Stone talking about warnings for March and April. I want to greet everyone. Thank you for joining me on the Perry Stone YouTube channel. Uh, The title of this is called, Are the March and April Warnings True? And I want to share with you, first of all, a little introduction before we share some of the information. YouTube is an amazing place to get information that you probably don't get anywhere else. However, there are a lot of opinions as to what is going to happen in the future from people who are specialists and some who are not specialists who are always giving their opinion. I mean, the stock market was already supposed to have crashed, you know, over the past year to year and a half, and the dollar was already supposed to have died the past year and year and a half. And so I'm a little bit skeptical when I just hear predictions being made uh, when there may not be evidence. And of course, a lot of predictions are based on speculation. So that's why I'm very careful sharing this with you, but I do want to give you what we do know. And that is this, that we are having, first of all, freight uh, disruptions, and you know this, the, the, the freight, um, the ships that are coming in, the shipping containers that are coming in are in ports, especially on the west coast of the United States, just sitting there. Uh, somebody had ordered shoes for Christmas, and when they finally got them, they all had mold in them, and they had to destroy them. It was a big shoe company out on the west coast. So that's, that is a situation that is legitimately taking place. Secondly is a trucking challenge, and I'm, a, I'm good friends with the uh, president of Covenant Transport, who I have a YouTube video uh, with him being interviewed, and he can give you the details of the complications and difficulties in the trucking industry. For example, with truckers retiring, with regulations in certain states hindering them from being able to, uh, uh, you know, sit, they have to go out of state with their uh, trucks. I won't get into all that. You can check that out with him. And also, uh, if you've noticed what Canada did recently, and now there's these huge protests in Canada with truckers, then there is definitely a disruption in the supply chain. And first of all, some people are just, some people have quit work. A lot of people, when they have the virus, have to stay out five to 10 days. There's this huge disruption again with uh, Omicron, which um, is still out there. And then there's, you know, brand new strands that are coming. So. All of this combined together has created a perfect storm, you might say. Now, here's where I want to talk about something, and that is the food situation in the United States. There seems to be, if you go into some stores, and our stores here seem to be doing well, but I have had uh, women on staff that shop and pay them to say, you know, you go to some of the stores and there's, there's things missing on the shelves that normally are not missing. And this has to, of course, do with the supply chain disruptions which are taking place. But then wh- what, is, what is this going to do in the spring? According to some of the large industries that produce the food and can the food and ship the food and box the food, prices are going to increase an average of 5 to 8% on an average for most products that you buy in a store. Now, some will remain the same, but a lot of them are going to go up. Also, uh, the Kraft Company, which is a great food production company, has said there will be certain food which will go up 
30% higher in the month of March. Now, that was a statement that they came out with. And a lot of this uh, uh, is the, 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 the supply situation, the supply disruption situation, not being able to get people to unload trucks, et cetera. And I'll go into something else here that we discovered. And also, people who uh, want dried food, which is the food, the long uh, Long, uh, long-term long storage food that goes 20, 25 years are having a real challenge. I have some friends of mine who actually um, sell this type of food and they can't get it. One of my very dear friends, and Charlie knows who I'm talking about, they said, we're out of it. Uh, we, can't, we cannot get the food that we used to supply people with hundreds and hundreds of cases of this uh, every month. So there's something going on here that's uh, pretty serious, especially when you talk about food. Food companies, the major ones, are definitely going to increase prices. And people, and this, this is what you got to understand, the reason the prices are going up is they are paying triple from pre, uh, pre-pandemic transportation rates. So in other words, it's costing them three times more to get it delivered from one location to another location than it was before. Some, however, and are holding off if the food does not rot and, you know, if the food will last for months, some of the uh, companies have said they're holding off shipping until the prices go down and they're not sure when that's going to be. That's creating a shortage in some of the stores. There are storms, dis- storm disruptions as well. And there's also a uh, virus disruption of people who are just not coming to work in the factories and not coming to work and to uh, drive the trucks and things of that nature. Now, a West Coast company said to deliver from east to west used to cost us pre-pandemic $7,000 a shipment. It has gone to $18,000 to $20,000 per shipment. So what happens is the cost is passed on to the consumer. And then we're dealing with inflation. Uh, you know, there's deflation, inflation, hyperinflation. I think the, da- the more dangerous one, to be honest, would be hyperinflation. And I don't know that we're going to go into that. There are some people that's predicting that I don't know. But some of this has been alleged, and I'm not a conspiracy theory person, I'm really not, but it has been alleged to be part of a global reset. And only time will tell how far that goes. Someone asked my wife, my wife is a wonderful cook. If you ever come to our main conferences and she's cooking her pot pies or her chicken salads or a chicken salad or her fried pies for the uh, main event, you've got to get some of Pam's cooking. She is phenomenal. But they asked Pam, Pam, is there anything that we can do? Or what do you do when you see the prices going up? Uh, because, you know, it's, it's her and I now, but we usually, look, when my wife cooks, Jonathan, Katie, the two grandbabies come over. So there's about six, six of us uh, eating at the table because when mama cooks, they all want to eat mama's cooking. But what Pam has uh, done recently, which I enjoy, is she cooks soup. She takes vegetable soup makes a huge pot of it, we eat it that night, and then we have about uh, a fourth of it uh, left over, and that becomes my lunch for the, for the next day, two or three. It actually can extend for that long. So she will cook different types of soup that the family likes and actually put cornbread in soup. And sometimes she'll fix a big pot of beans with cornbread and beans. Now you can tell we're country people, can't you? But instead of uh, fixing a big meal or a large meal, we, we, we stick sometimes with some very uh, basic things. And so uh, the fact is that you have to readjust your uh, budgets and you have to figure out what you can afford and the snacks that you can afford and how to kind, kind of uh, reduce it and uh, uh, save money as much as you can and also be able to take care of your family. And, you know, the Lord gives you wisdom. There's a lot of good people out there that are involved with dealing with these type of situations when they arise. And so I'm not the expert on it. My, my, my wife's the cook, but I'm not the expert on how to deal all of that because I never do the cooking or the shopping. She does. But I do want to say this, that we're coming to a time that all of you who are believers will need to have a daily prayer and also ask God to give you wisdom. Pray for wisdom on how to live in the day and time in which we're living. And after all, it's predicted in Scripture the Lord knew it was coming, and He brought you to the kingdom for such a time as this. And that's what you have to keep in mind. Now, next we're going to hear from a lady uh, named Amara. She had a dream about price increases as well as inflation, and I think she's quite interesting. So here is Amara with her dream. Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. 
God gave me a dream. And in this dream, I went into a store. And this store, they sell everything there. So I had went in and I wanted to buy um, these betta fish. I used to buy betta fish all the time um, for my kids. Um, it's like, you know, these, these really tiny um, fish that come in like different colors, blue, red. And um, so the, the lady that was working in the store, I asked her if she had any betta fish. Cause usually when I finish uh, grocery shopping or I finish all my errands for the day, if the kids have been really good, I, I surprise them with a pet fish every once in a while. So when I came into her, into her store, she told me that she had some betta fish and she had uh, brought out this box. It kind of looked like a big cardboard box and it had like a bunch of like uh, shoe boxes in it. But inside of the shoe boxes, she had um, like little fish tanks that she kept the betta fish in. So when she brought out the betta fish to me, she told me that it would be $50. Now, normally when I go get um, these betta fish for my kids, it's like $2 a fish, you know, and the fish food is usually about a dollar or so. So when she told me that this betta fish was $50, I was arguing with her that, that $50 is, is um, very expensive for a betta fish because normally the betta fish are um, only two bucks. So this... This lady, she told me that the price of everything has gone up, and if I don't want to buy the fish, then I don't. Then I should just leave. So then I was, I was telling her that I'm not going to buy the fish. That it's okay. I would just get them something else. So then she, she um, tried to offer me something else in the store, but that too was was way overpriced. So when I got out of this vision, um, God was telling me that the price of everything, especially food, is about to go up. In the dream, I was trying to buy betta fish from the lady. The price of, of fish and meat and everything in the grocery stores is about to skyrocket. There is going to be a inflation going on where everything is going to be overpriced because very soon the the um, the economy is going to crash. So my advice is for people to try to stock up on whatever you can. Um, even today, I I try to go to the store to buy as much as I can um, before all of the prices begin to skyrocket. Um, the, the Bible also says in, in the book of Revelation that before Jesus comes, this would happen, that the price of, of food and barley and all those things and uh, the, the price of everything would, would go up. So this is in prophecy in the book of Revelation and it is just more evidence that the Bible is true and the Bible is real and everything in it is real. And it is evidence that that God does not lie. Um, so my advice is to try to um, be prepared for these times that we are about to, to go into. God bless you. We fly soon. We'll be right back with more of this very special broadcast after this message. Hello again, this is The Watchman. Please join us each week for an exciting and inspirational podcast dealing with angel encounters, heavenly visitations, near-death experiences, as well as modern-day prophecies that are relevant to us today. So tune in each week and share it with your friends. After all, they could use a little inspiration in their life, too. That's the Watchman on the Wall podcast, and now you can find us on YouTube.
Now, in part two of our podcast today, we're going to hear from two more people who've had dreams and visions of price increases and food shortages. So here now is a lady named Norma. Greetings, friends. This is Norma from Texas once again coming to you um, with a set of important dreams that I had in September 4th, 2020. Yes, it's been a year exactly that I had that dream, but um, I believe there's still time for this. There were three dreams in one night. Uh, something that had never happened to me before because they were all the same dream with different outcomes. So um, in September 4, 2020, I had a set of three dreams in one night. On my first dream, I, uh, my husband, the children, and I were about to get ready to, to go to have dinner. The table was served, and, and then we proceeded to, to sit at the table. And on our table, uh, on top of the table, was like a all-you-can-eat buffet. There was so much food, so much food. And we sat down, and I woke up. And that was a very short dream, so I went back to sleep. Once again, we're about to have supper. We're about to sit at the table, my husband, the kids, and I. And on the table before us, there was a plate, and on that plate was like uh, like a meat and like uh, two vegetables. And I woke up and I was like, that's very weird. Same dream, different outcome. I wake up, I go to the bathroom, come back, go to sleep. It was still uh, like around four in the morning. Go to sleep again. And once again, I'm dreaming the same thing. We're about to sit down to eat. And on our table this time, There was like a bowl, a bowl of soup, but it was like oat, like oats. And it was like a soup, like an oat soup that was kind of brownish, did not have milk or anything like that, didn't have any vegetables. It was just like, it was very unattractive. And and I woke up. So uh, it's easy to understand what it means, the food becoming less and less. So I reached out to, once again, my friend and Faith, my sister and Faith, and I called her and I said, look, I had these three dreams, uh, and I explained everything to her, and I said, can you pray to see, you know, what else the Holy Spirit's talking to you? And uh, and so she calls me about two hours later, and she says, okay, I prayed, and this is what I got. And she said, um, technically, we have about two years to prepare, because on the third dream there was very little food so she said um, there's famine coming uh, and we have about two years to prepare Uh, so this was a year ago so technically we have about a year because uh, you know I'm barely releasing the dream and uh, the verse that kept coming to mind because when I have these dreams uh, the Holy Spirit tells me like read this verse read this verse it relates to what you dream and so the verse that kept coming to mind it's uh the book of revelation uh chapter 6 verse 6 and this is what it says <clears throat> and i heard a voice in the midst of the four living creatures saying a quart of wheat for a denarius and three quarts of barley for a denarius, and do not harm the oil and the wine. So what does that mean? Uh, I believe that food is going to get extremely expensive. We've already seen it. Inflation is about 28% than it was last year. Um, And you can see that there's less and less things that you cannot find at the store. So I believe it's going to be a combination of both of those that there's going to be less food and that there's going to be uh, the inflation to buy one thing is going to be very expensive. Um, just yesterday, I went grocery shopping. I used to spend about, on average, I would spend approximately, um, I would go every two to three weeks. So I would spend about $300 on average for food for the whole family of four. 
and uh, that would take me you know three three weeks to go through it and and yesterday it, it went up to almost five hundred dollars for about the same items that I used to buy you know a year ago or a few years ago so here's here's what I what what I've been experiencing and it's just no need to go crazy and start storing food and starting becoming you know cr frantic and you know hoarding and hoarding food and items and things like that become resourceful one thing that I recommend it's pay off everything you owe don't have debt because the people that have debt that are carrying you know so much debt that owe the house that owe the cars that owe this that owe that and have told me so many credit cards are the ones that are going to have a more difficult time trying to make ends meet trying to you know buy food trying to do these things so don't carry a lot of debt second uh this is what happened to me i since covid started last year we saw the shortage in toilet paper, the shortage in so many different things. And so we started hoarding, just like almost everybody else. I bought, you know, huge sacks of, of rice and beans and things like that. And guess what happened? Bugs started getting into our supply of food, of grains. And then I said, well, I'm not going to worry about that because you know what? I have, uh, I have a... Uh, trees i have fruit trees i had papaya trees i have tons i had figs i had pecan trees i had so many different things and guess what happened in texas in case you guys are not familiar with what happened this february of 2021 there was a uh, the temperatures dropped drastically and we ended up having um power outages for weeks so many people were without power and without water and so guess what happened to all our landscaping it froze and some of it is barely coming back and i know this winter is gonna be probably just as bad which means you know more um more <laughs> that we're our our trees and everything are gonna take a toll if you know um if they manage to make it so because some of them are barely recovering all the citrus died uh, and they're barely coming back they're not fully recovered so what does that tell me in every single dream that I had I had something to eat whether little or a lot I had something to eat what else does that tell me my trust is not in what I can do for me or my family it's what God can do for us what does it tell me that he will not abandon us our last dream comes from a lady named Amanda. Hi everyone, it's Amanda again, and I am back to do another video with you guys. And I'm going to share a few snippets of different dreams that I've had. And um, whatever the Holy Ghost really wants to do with me through the um, video we're recording today. Anyways, um... I just wanted to also share some dreams with you guys. So these are just some random different dreams I've had over the last probably six months or so. Maybe a little longer, maybe the last 12 months. But uh, one very recent one I had was about uh, Megan, not Megan, uh, yeah, Megan um, Kelly, I think her name is. Yeah, Megan Kelly. And the dream was I was walking down my hallway and my big screen TV, Megan Kelly was on it and she was smiling and like there was like this burst of celebration from her that Donald Trump won the presidency and I was like really excited in this dream so that was the main emphasis that I felt led to share with you guys and this was um very recent like after the election happened and all the um all the legal stuff going on and everything like this is a new dream post-election even um with the whole process that's happening right now so God shared that very recently with me and I googled about it uh, about Megyn Kelly and I um, was refreshed in my memory that she didn't really get along with Donald Trump and so now 
I didn't know until after the stream and I researched her. She vouches for him. She's on Twitter and she speaks well of him and she really is um, rooting for him to win. So I thought that was pretty neat how God can churn things around between two people and how um, God can make good out of everything. You know, he's, he's awesome. There's nothing too hard for God. He said, I'm the God of all flesh. You know, there's nothing too hard for God, anything. So whatever your cares are, just cast them to Jesus. If something's bothering you, say, God, I'm giving this to you. If there's something I need to do, please lead me to do that. But I want to cast my cares to you and then rest in him. So in me too, I have to, I have to practice that myself. So just keep on going with Jesus. But anyways, I, I had that dream and then I dreamed some other COVID type stuff. Um, it was one dream I had was I was outside of a parking lot in a Kroger by my house. There was cops at the front of a huge long line of people. And it was like, not just like single file line. It was like crowds of people in a line. And I would guess there was like hundred people or more, like this crowd, a crowded line of people who wanted to go in the store. And I, I don't, I never got it interpreted, but if it's literal straight up, you know, that's, that's going to sound like a very hard time to go grocery shopping, you know? Um, just to me, that's how it really seemed. And there was cops in front of it. So they were trying to like control the, um, how many people wanted to get in. So it sounds like a hard time. And, uh, I also, so pray about that. I also have dreamed about a food shortage in America, something about a food shortage. And, um, I don't remember all the details of my dream, but I, I did dream about that. It was a little, I dream little quick dreams sometimes, like little snippets. And um, I also dreamed of being inside of a Walmart type store. I think it was Walmart. And like mass amounts of aisle space were just empty. So, and I was like kind of astounded, like so much is gone. Like it's crazy. But do you think about how so many places are hiring right now and how everything's kind of in this this limbo of chaos, if you will. And, you know, it's having a domino effect, but God is still on his throne. He's still good. He knows what's going on. He's talking to his servants, the prophets about everything. So we just have to pray and put our trust in him. That's what he wants. He, he says, without faith, it's impossible to please me. So that's very important that we trust God. Hello again, this is The Watchman. Please join us on our new video channel called Encounters from Beyond the Veil. It's the same exciting content as our audio podcast, but in a shorter, but yet a video format. Also, please subscribe so you won't miss any of our episodes. That's Encounters from Beyond the Veil, exclusively found on YouTube. Well, thanks again for listening, and if you enjoyed this episode, please share it with your friends. Any comments or suggestions you may have you can send to the Watchman on the Wall 2020 at gmail.com. We encourage you to subscribe so you'll always be notified of our future episodes. Well, thanks again, and we'll see you next time on the Watchman on the Wall podcast.